All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so this morning uh, I'm going to critique this video by old school Bible Baptist or whatever his name is. All right, and uh, I enjoy this guy. I subscribe to him. I appreciate uh, him bringing up this conversation. Uh, unfortunately, he's he's wrong, and. Uh, I want to make it easy for anybody that might watch this video to understand uh, the, the truth of the matter and it's important to understand and in order to understand you must have faith in the Word of God in the Bible that you hold in your hands once that faith comes then comes understanding all right, so he's gonna he's gonna give an example. He, I think he says he's he gives uh, nine or ten examples or whatever. I'm just gonna focus on the first one that he gives, and he's gonna quote from uh, a passage from Ezekiel. All right, and I'm gonna let him I'm gonna let him talk here, but uh, it's important to know that it's what's in the Old Testament it's revealed in the New Testament there is no contradiction between the Old Testament and the New Testament the New Testament will reveal things of the Old Testament it, but uh, I'd, you know I'd like to I could talk hours from, on this it's interesting because if they had super IQs they could have discerned from Everything that's in the New Testament, they could have discerned by reading and believing and understanding the Old Testament. Even all the way back to Genesis 1. When God made man in his image. If you read, for example, verse 26 where it says, And let us make man in our image after our likeness. Perhaps I should go there. Make sure I'm not butchering this. Okay, Genesis 1, verse 26. Just to give you an example here. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, you could take that right there. Of course, we already know, because it's revealed to us. But we already know the significance of this. And that is, God is making us in His image. Both of the making us the body making our body and then making our soul and then giving us his spirit I right, and this is all revealed um, in, in particular in the in the New Testament but it could have all bef been figured out if if uh, if they knew and understood verse 26 okay so let's go on let's I'll I'd like to talk more about that I'm afraid I'll ramble too much but let's listen to what this guy says we're talking about how were folks saved and I'm gonna put that that word saved in quotation marks because when we say saved in the Old Testament we are a hundred percent not talking about saved like we're saved today in the New Testament. Alright, so let's look at... Uh, uh, okay. Um, just throw out a curveball of confusion right there. That's that's brilliant. I'm, you know, I'm going to be a little bit hard because you ought not to preach on things you don't understand. Salvation. We're talking about how were folks saved and I'm going to put that, that word saved in quotation marks because when we say saved in the Old Testament we are 100% not talking about saved like we're saved today. So when we say saved, we don't mean saved. Alright, so it's like when we say dog, we don't mean dog. And we, when we say cat, we don't mean cat. So when I say say, I don't mean say. And really, it all depends on what your definition of is, is. Alright, so... That, I don't know what's going on here. 
I, honest to God, I don't know what's going on. Uh, in my opinion, that's that's not being honest. When you take a word like saved, hey, nobody in the Old Testament was saved, but I don't mean it's saved in the way that we're... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, what's he say again? Maybe, maybe I need more coffee. How were folks saved? And I'm going to put that, that word saved. How were folks saved? Saved in quotation marks. Because when we say saved in the Old Testament, we are 100% not talking about saved like we're saved today. So... Does saved in the Old Testament mean the same as being saved today? Because he just said no, it doesn't mean the same thing. Maybe I need more coffee. Maybe what he's maybe the only thing he's trying to say is they were not saved the same way that we were set that we we're saved today. Uh, I'm guessing that's what he meant to say, but it comes off as the word saved doesn't mean saved. That's what it sounded like to me. In the New Testament. All right. So let's look at uh, 18, Ezekiel 18, <clears throat> verse 20. <clears throat> this is Old Testament salvation. <laughs> the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul's going to die. <clears throat> the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous mm -hmm. shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, turn from his sins, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful, and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. And the same thing about exercise of faith. There's something he's got to do. Amen? He, hey, he's got to do what? He's got to turn for all his sins. He's got to keep all the statutes. And do that which is lawful and right. He shall all right, so that's enough. That, that's really enough. Uh, because, uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> this is so ignorant, it's, it, it's almost... It, Embarrassing. Um. Oh, jeez. Yes. All right. So, let's try to make this easy to understand. Okay. Nobody is able to keep the law. Nobody. And so if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All right, now, it's important to understand that there's a difference between our body dying and the second death. Alright, because it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this, the judgment. Alright. I'm going to try to make this real simple, okay? If the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die well nobody is able to do that and it is appointed unto everybody to die for all have sinned and come short oops For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Alright. Now, 
this is really simple it really is the reason why we need a savior is because we can't do it ourselves the evidence is overwhelming all right so nobody was saved by keeping the law nobody they had, nobody's ever been able to do it and even Jesus made himself sin for us who knew no sin who knew no sin became sin for us All right let me for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him you know, this is really critical here in him none of us are righteous none of us are righteous all of our righteousness is as filthy rags before God now keep that in mind all right because this is Old Testament and so you think of what well they turned from their sins and therefore they became saved and therefore they didn't even need a savior uh, they didn't even need God all they needed to do was abide by the law well the evidence is overwhelming that nobody is able to keep the law that's why we need a savior all right they weren't able to do it in the Old Testament they weren't able they're not able we're not able to do it today and it's interesting to me that you go back to the Garden of Eden Adam and Eve just them two and all they had to do was not screw up and what they do they screwed up all right so they uh, were taken out and uh, they were made to have children and dig the ground and all that sort of stuff multiply the earth and all this and that and they were allowed to live a thousand years and their children grandchildren a thousand years and what happened they screwed it up uh, they just screwed it up big time and so God destroyed the world and then sort of reset the parameters if you will or whatever and now we live 70 years 80 in strength right and we're still screwing it up we're just not screwing it up as quickly as they did before the flood that's all it's the only difference so that's why I think uh, we read uh, there's nothing new under the Sun all the screwing up has already been done we're just repeating the screw ups that have been made already in the past it's just one screw up after another and that's why we need a savior we can't do it on our own and we're fools to think that we can and now you're saying um, you know like uh, for example David when he was murdering people what did he repent of his sin and then therefore he was saved and, and therefore David didn't need a savior or Moses you know where where were you where are you getting these examples maybe he talks about some examples I don't know but there's um, nothing in the scripture in the Bible that will support that idea nothing nothing at all and let me tell you that this oh uh, yeah let's do it this way all right so um, uh, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him oh, I thought yeah I'm not sure uh, let me just read verse 20 because I think he reads verse 20 as well the soul that sins it shall die the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him all right so 
We're not righteous. We already read that in Isaiah. All of our righteousness as, is as filthy rags. The only righteousness is God. His righteousness is the only righteousness. Alright? We're not righteous at all. Oh, what are you doing? Helping some old lady across the street and thinking you're righteous? Well, you're going to say that in the Old Testament that they walked late old ladies across the street and therefore they were righteous? Well, what kind of righteousness do you think is more righteous than the righteousness of God? Really? Seriously? It's silly. And in particular, when this is all revealed unto us... Or to us in, in the New Testament. This is all revealed. All right, for example, we go to uh, you know, um, Hebrews 10. Let's, let's see what Hebrews 10 says. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So how were their sins taken away? Well, was it taken away by turning from their sins? If the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? And not that he should return from his ways and live. So is this talking about the judgment of God or just remaining alive in the flesh until it's until the day he dies? Um, you know, <laughs> there's a difference when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in them. For his iniquity that he has done, shall he die. All right. So, we can compare this with the wages of sin is death. Revealed in the New Testament. Revealed in Romans. Made plain. Made easier to understand. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. So in Hebrews 10, just remember, it's not possible that the blood of, goat, of uh, bulls and goats should take away sins. It's not possible. Okay. So what they were doing in the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of the Lord Jesus Christ and Him laying down His life for the sins of the whole world. Alright. Now, I want to show you something here. Uh, it, this, because I've battled this, I've battled this. Uh, how are they saved in the Old Testament? Well, it, how are we saved today? If you can answer how you're saved today, then you should know the answer to how they were saved in the Old Testament and so really uh, wanna, I want to slow down just for a second and you know Ephesians 2 chap or Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast this hasn't changed this is revealed in the New Testament but the, this this is not a change at all in fact if you slow down and you take a couple of deep breaths you slow your heart rate down and focus and think for by grace are you saved All right. if you just focus on that alone and just for the moment forget forget this just for a moment forget all this stuff that I highlighted and just focus on 
these six words for by grace are ye saved focus take a deep breath what are you saved by think about it and it's a, it's a big deal it really is are you saved because you have faith no that's not why you're saved you're saved by grace that's why I say you gotta slow down slow your heart rate down and think this is important you're not saved by your faith you believe you believe in you know Bozo the Clown Bugs Bunny and be saved you can believe in Jesus and not be saved it's not up to you to be saved it's up to God You're saved by grace, not of yourselves, not of yourself. You're not saved because of you. You're, we are 100% at the mercy of God, 100% at the mercy of God. And that's never changed. That's never changed. It's always been by grace, always. It's never been by anything else. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11, and same thing, you know, take a deep breath, breathe easy, relax, slow down, and read, and try to understand. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, that's not changed. The evidence of things uh, not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch was translated. But without faith it is impossible to please him. Impossible. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, by which man became the heir. Here, let me read that. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham. By faith. Through faith, faithful. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. They weren't ignorant of them needing a Savior. They're not ignorant of God. They're not ignorant of the fact that they are 100% at the mercy of God. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off right now we have the promise of God that those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are the children of God right and we have the Spirit of God that dwells in us in the Old Testament the Spirit dwelt among them that were the children of God which was a group of people and now Jesus has come and torn down that wall and made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. That's your difference. The promise of God is available to everybody. The kingdom of God is available to everybody and the Spirit of God will dwell in you that are saved. None of these guys Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Joseph, Moses, they none of them were perfect. None of them kept the law. And none of them, yeah, <laughs> there's no examples of any of them repenting of their sin and being saved. That, the idea is ridiculous. All the way around, 
all the way around. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so, like in Matthew, for example, uh, Jesus says, "Go ye and learn what this means." Go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. All right, so go and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. That's not a New Testament thing. It's not like, oh, well, we're going to change the rules. And, I mean, it's the idea is so ridiculous. But they were able to be righteous and keep the law and be saved. And then God pulled the rug out from under us. And now, nobody can save themselves. you like, okay, you can get saved this one particular way. And then Jesus comes along and says, oh, no, I'm doing it different now. That, no, 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 that... Well, what the hell's the matter with people? Really? Hosea 6, verse 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. For I desert, desired mercy. This is not a new thing. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I desired mercy and not sacrifice. I desired mercy. See, we are 100% at the mercy of God. We can't just take salvation. In the Old Testament, they can't just take nothing. It's always been by grace always you think men were saving themselves I wonder what God would say to that I mean you saying God's not in control and then all of a sudden Jesus comes along and said ah, I'm gonna stop I'm gonna put a stop to that people were just well, what what were they doing they were uh, obeying the law for what 10 seconds It's not possible. Not possible. See, the, the thought of foolishness is sin. Is that a New Testament thing or is that an Old Testament thing? Proverbs 24 is the Old Testament. The thought of foolishness is sin. So you're going to tell me that these guys, they turned from the sin and didn't have, or the, yeah, they, they turned from their sin, but they never had another foolish thought and they were saved because... But what happens when they turn from their sin and then they sin and then they got to keep turning from their sin and they'll spin out of control and they'll fall over. They'll get dizzy and fall over. Yeah, what's the matter with you? It's always been by grace. We have always been 100% at the mercy of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it, that's not, never changed. Again, what's changed is the promise of God was, you know, the, the kingdom of God was available to, inside the group of people. I, I like, I, you know, I don't know if that's an easier way to understand it. You think of one country, you got one country. And that country, within that country is the kingdom of God. Alright. And surrounded on the outside of that country is a wall. And outside of that wall is not the kingdom of God but the enemy of God all right now Jesus comes along and he tears down that wall and makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him so now things have changed but it, it's the idea that the Grace has changed. Yeah, that's that's it. Doesn't make any sense, right? And so now again, now 
has the Lord been revealed, the Christ has been revealed and made known, and nobody is without, or nobody is, nobody has an excuse. Nobody has an excuse. There is no excuse for not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. None whatsoever. Everybody ought to know. Everybody knows they need a Savior. Everybody knows they can't do it on their own. You ought to know. I don't know how you don't know. I mean, eventually, hopefully, you all figure that out. You need a Savior. You can't do it on your own. Think about an old man like this, an old man like me, been through the ringer a couple of times, and, it, you know, you would think that, well, hey, we're, we're so polished, we're so knowledgeable and experienced, and we're so wise that we ought to be able to live without any sin. And I can't do it. And I know this gentleman right here, he can't do it either. Nobody can do it. See, once you get to a... Maybe he's got 10 years to go. I don't know. But once you get to a, a particular year, you know, a particular uh, point, if you will, you realize, no, I, I can try my best. That's all I can do. Try my best to make the right decisions, to say the right things. To do the right things, but it's it's much more than it's. And it really, this idea of sin, it's not even about. Oh, I'm trying not to sin today. It, it's not about that at all. It's about being in the spirit of God and enjoying life. And it brings me joy to to live in the spirit, whatever that is. And I don't, need, I don't need sin at all. But I'm still in this body. I'm still going to sin. It's part of being in this body. And it serves as an example of why I need a Savior. And, it, and it, in some respects, it helps sharpen me. Knowing that I'm not perfect. And to see my faults and to remember my faults and to know that the Spirit is there and all I have to do is follow the Spirit and there's peace joy wisdom and understanding <clears throat> when I follow the Spirit but the idea that I could go be with no sin it's not possible it's just not possible. No, I don't care if you lived it. If I lived a thousand years, can't do it. Can't do it because I'm in this body. This body is corrupt. And that's, <laughs> it's just, okay. <clears throat> it's nonsense. It's nonsense to think that, well, we can't do it today, but they could do it back then. No, they couldn't do it back then either. Alright, so, um, it's it just nonsense. I, you know, it, it seems uh, particularly interesting that people that have absolutely no understanding of the Bible, they'll, they'll go to Ezekiel. And there's, I don't want to get into it too much, but there's uh, numerous false doctrines and just things that are just plain made up uh, in regards to the book of Ezekiel. And you think about for example, the UFO theories. People just make up stuff. No understanding whatsoever. And here's another example pointing to Ezekiel and saying, no, the people in the Old Testament, they were saved by being a good person. They, 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 all they do is repent of their sins. Repent of their sins. You would think... There would be more discussion in the Old Testament about repenting of sin. As much as people talk about it, you would think there would be a big deal 
you know, there's a lot of books in the Old Testament. You would think there would be there would be something. There ain't nothing. It's incredible. Right, and in fact, it, it, when you read it in the New Testament, it doesn't say repent of sins. It says repent for the remission or the removal or the forgiveness or the cancellation of sins. Repent, meaning turn from unbelief to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all that means. So when Jesus says, I came not to call the righteous those that think they're righteous. If you think you're righteous, then you don't think you need a Savior. But Jesus has come for those that know and understand that they need a Savior. They can't do it on their own. The righteous think that they can do it on their own. They can't. They're going to find out. The sinner, he knows he can't do it on his own. That he needs a Savior. I mean, this stuff is so interesting. It's so interesting. So anyways, I, I do appreciate, uh, you know, somebody talking about this stuff. But, I mean, it, to me it's just fascinating how wrong people are. And this gentleman here, just a couple of days ago, talked about a thousand years after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and I also left a comment but he didn't get to it and he's still working on it and I said will there be children born after the Lord Jesus comes and you know my you know what's going on in my head what I'm really asking is do you think you're gonna have sex with unsaved women for a thousand years after Jesus comes. That's that's really the heart of the matter. I mean, these people, some admit it and some don't. But that's the sole reason, the only reason people teach a thousand year bonus period after the Lord comes. Is because of this fascination deep down in their heart. That they want to continue to have sex. It's all about sex. And the Bible even tells us that's what's going to happen that's what's happening the Bible said that's what's going to happen and that's what's happening it's amazing really uh, to see and to, to read the Bible and to see it playing out alright so anyways I think uh, I think that's enough it's real simple alright it's always been about grace we've always been at the mercy of God God's the one that made us and you think, what, we created our own path at one point and then God took that away? No. We've always been 100% at the mercy of God. Always. That's never changed. That's never changed. And I, I think in some ways that if you don't understand that, man, perhaps you don't understand why you're saved today. And if, like, for example, this gentleman here, he don't understand why he saved maybe I shouldn't be so hard on those that don't understand that are still trying to figure it out right because it took me time to figure it out but maybe I'm being too hard on people but I don't know any other way other than to speak plainly that you're ignorant if you don't understand this that we've always been 100% at the mercy of God. That's never changed. If you don't understand that, then you're probably not understanding why you're saved now. And then I think it's fair. I think it's fair if you don't understand why you're saved now. I think it's fair to say, well, who knows? Maybe you're not saved. Maybe that's why you're not understanding the simplicity of the scripture I mean it's a fair it's a fair question it's a fair concern 
You think about even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn, this is not repent of the sins, okay? Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. This is about believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, even unto this day, when Moses is read, they, they can't understand it. They read it, they can't understand it. Why? Because they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the veil is upon their heart. They can't see it. They don't understand it. But once you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe the Bible, the Word of God, in heaven and on earth, the Bible that you hold in your hands, the Word of God that you hold in your hands, how can you say that you believe the Word of God in heaven if you're not believing the Word of God on earth? Anyway, so once that faith has come, the veil is taken away. Your eyes are open. Right? All right. So, anyways, that's enough for today. Uh, again, uh, you have any thoughts? If I'm being too hard, look, I, you know, <laughs> here's my thing. I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to be fooled. I'm not going to say, oh, I am goofy gooey golly gee whiz you little bit uh, mistake I, you know how no what you're wrong buddy you're wrong what's wrong saying hey you're wrong when you're wrong if I'm wrong tell me hey you're wrong and then show me what's right because that's what I'm trying to do here this fellow's wrong and I'm gonna show you what's right it's always been by grace always that's never changed. We've always been 100% at the mercy of God. Alright. Have a good day.